We're getting ready for the final four this weekend. And if you can't get in front of a television, make sure you turn up that radio. You can listen to all of Westwood One's coverage of the final four in the national championship game this Saturday and Monday right here on Fox Sports 920, the Jersey WNJE, Trenton, Philadelphia. The time right now in our Princeton Orthopedic Associates Studios, 516. One team this year so far has defeated Gonzaga, and that's the head coach of BYU, Dave Rose's squad, and the coach of BYU is kind enough to hop on board with us right now. Coach, appreciate a few minutes, and how are you? Yeah, we're doing well. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Well, thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. So uh, back in February, February 2nd, you guys lost uh, to Gonzaga, 87-75. And then uh, later on in the month, uh, February 25th, you're able to get the victory, 79-71. What was the biggest adjustment that you made from the first time around to the second time when you got ready to play Gonzaga? <clears throat> well, probably the biggest adjustment was that we were able to control uh, Nigel, you know, Williams guys, he, he's, he's so good. And at our place, he just kind of went wild and, you know, he had a 30 plus 34, 35 point night. And, uh, and we, we kind of held him in check. Yeah. I think he only got 18 or 19 at his place, but the, he is a, um, you know, a, a really big part of what they do. And, uh, you know, and, and we, we got fortunate. The timing of the game was good. They just clinched the WCC title regular season the night before they were traveling back from San Diego to a home game, which is really tough logistically and a good, you know, senior night. But, uh, uh, we played, we put, you know, we, we put a run on them two or three times in that first game, but we got down big and then cut it to four or five or six. And, and, and then, and then we did the same thing in the first half up there. And so I think our guys had confidence that, you know, uh, we, we could play with them and, and, you know, make a game out of it. And, and then uh, just made huge plays down the stretch. I mean, it was, it was a great game for us. Do you think it was actually better? And I know it benefits you guys because you got the victory up against Gonzaga. But do you think for Gonzaga's sake, it was better to just get a loss out of the way, not to deal with that pressure of the talks of all being undefeated? Well, you know, from the outside, you never want your team to lose. But from the outside, when you're looking at someone else's team, uh, I, I think there's a lot of pressure that you – removed from uh from guys you know especially when you're when you're in the february 25th i mean and you haven't lost yet that becomes a story of its own and you don't need any more stories of, of its own late in the season what you need is just all your guys focused together and 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 i'll tell you the first game of the a wcc tournament which was their next game after their first loss uh you know they were trying to figure out stuff with their team that most teams figure out in November and December and January, you know, how you come back from that loss. So I do believe that uh, in some ways, distraction-wise, it probably helped quite a bit. And you know that just being here on the East Coast, a lot of people don't get to see Gonzaga play a lot. And a lot of times people are skeptical of a team like that, especially when they're not in one of these major big-time conferences. But you look at the run that Mark Few has had being the head coach there since 1999. It's good to see him finally get through and get into that final four. Cause he's done a good coaching job for a long time, coach. Uh, absolutely. Their program is uh, tremendous. And what they usually lack is uh, depth. Their first five or six guys are as good as any, you know, power five league team, top team that that's out there. And, and then what happens is that, uh, you know, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, maybe, you know, aren't as good this year. They have the most unique chemistry of their, uh, you know, their depth. It's, it's, it's just tremendous to watch them, unless you're playing them, of course. We had one of those guys out when we played him, Kim Tilly. The, I mean, the Tilly kid, he, he uh, didn't play, and that, that kind of hurt their rotation a little bit. But the depth, the age, the experience uh, with this Gonzaga team, uh, well, you, you can put them up against you know, anybody in the country, and obviously they've proven that. I know that you're competition and you guys are adversaries when you're playing in conference play, but do you root for the team right now that's in your league to try to maybe get the conference some more respect by bringing a national championship if they're able to do you it? Know, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, we're talking about the WCC, and we're young in the league. We've only been in the league for six years, but, uh, you know, when, when they, you know, beat the, you know, won that game and, and be, you know, on Saturday and then got a chance to move on to the Final Four, beat Xavier, I mean, the first thing that flashes up on the screen is first WCC team to make the uh, Final Four since 1957. So, you know, that, that is a, uh, quite an accomplishment first. But second of all, 
you know, we're all battling out of here to, to make each of our leagues as legitimate as possible. And, and I think there's no better way than sending one of your teams to the Final Four, that's for sure. Has any of the South Carolina scouts contacted you this week to try to get some of the dirty <laughs> secrets, Coach? You know, I, I've uh, uh, Frank Martin and I have you know, been friends for years, and, uh, you know, the, 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 the advice that I can give them is just hope that Gonzaga's off a little bit because when they're, when they're on and they're clicking, just like all four of these teams, that's what makes this NCAA tournament so wonderful is that we're talking about there's a lot of teams in this tournament and they don't lose. They, they're, they're really used to winning. And so you got to beat them. And one team's got to beat the other team and teams don't lose. It gets really exciting. That's for sure. Take me a little bit more into your friendship with Frank Martin because you see his story. He was a bouncer, and then he becomes a really good high school coach, and everyone has this perception that he's just a crazy basketball coach, but I take him coaching my team any day, Coach. Absolutely, and no one cares about their players like Frank. I mean, Frank is as good as anybody, and and, and the respect that he has for this game and the university and where he's been and, and the challenge that's ahead of him, you know, we – um, we've spent uh, a lot of time off the floor and on different trips uh, uh, together with, uh, uh, you know, some of the acquaintances that we've had. And, and uh, he and his wife are just, uh, I mean, he's a great ambassador for this game. I mean, it gets a kind of a bad rap because he's a, he's an in-your-face, kind of an old-school guy. Uh, but the, the kids that make it for him are really, really committed, and they're invested in, in, in the program. And you saw it at Kansas State, and now you see it here. I we played him in uh, to go to the Sweet 16 a few years ago in Oklahoma City uh, when he was with Kansas State. And, and uh, anyways, we we had a relationship for quite a while and, and, and got a lot of respect for how Frank does his business. Dave Rose with us right now. Continuing on with Frank, his defense has been sensational in this tournament. And it's a really simple to me, and they do a great job at it. A man defense, they just try to put their hands in the passing lane, and it's all about effort, 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 and trying to get that second or third option pass and deceive you to try to pick it off. But that defense up against those Gonzaga bigs, it will be interesting to see how Coach does adjust to the bigs. How do you like this South Carolina defense up against the Gonzaga bigs? Well, it'll be, it will be a really tough matchup for Gonzaga. Uh, obviously, you know, South Carolina's got their issues trying to stop them, but this is the type of team that, uh, you know, can cause the Zags some problems. Uh, you know, we'll see if they just stay one-on-one, man-to-man. Uh, they don't bring, you know, they're not doing any stunts and bringing second guys to the, the big guys. You can't let that big guy catch the ball, uh, you know, within six feet of the basket because he is so skilled and so good. Karnowski is, uh, and he's a great passer. So you bring a second defender, he's going to find one of those shooters. And you saw that against Xavier. But uh, the athleticism and the length, I think, will be the biggest challenge for um, for Gonzaga. And, you know, they dealt with it the last, you know, two weekends pretty well. And we'll see how they do this weekend. I hate to say it's experience versus unexperience because all four of these coaches clearly do have a long experience. But there is something about Final Four experience. Roy Williams has it. He's been to nine of them. And the other three coaches, this is their first time going to a Final Four with the other uh, coaches, we, I know we talked about Frank and we also talked about Mark Few. Uh, how much, and including Dan Altman as well, how much do you think that experience factor really could help UNC or do we overrate it sometimes? Well, I, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, it, there's, there's obviously a lot of points to a guy who's brought his players here and been through it and how he treats his players. But I think the experience for me is who can get their guys to be more most like their team, like what their team has been all year long. And we'll see. You know, Mark has got an unbelievable temperament with the, all kinds of different types of players, and the consistency that he's had over the years has been uh, just tremendous. And, you know, Dana has been a grinder in this thing forever and had great teams. And, and that Oregon team, you know, Dana could do anything with them at all he wanted. And then they show up on uh, on Saturday, and they have a chance to uh, – to just make every shot they shoot. I mean, they put Arizona at their place early in the year in a spot where they just couldn't catch them. They could run and, 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 and chase them and try to guard them. And uh, Oregon just outshot them and put them in a, a spot where it was nobody could have probably beat them that night. So it's to me, the experience is which guy can actually get his team to be the team that he's coached for the last you know five or six months. I think it's a fascinating coaching matchup on both sides, but specifically with UNC Oregon, because 
just recently you've seen how many in-game adjustments both of those coaches make Roy Williams going to the zone when he was down up against Kentucky and then Oregon basically have to change some of what they do because they lost Boucher right before the tournament the adjustment factor by both of these coaches is very impressive to watch you know and th- there's no question you think about Dana's challenge I mean yeah, everybody's got injuries and everybody's got to deal with you know the 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 season and how it kind of plays out and sickness and injury, but but it's hard late in the year to lose one of your main guys and then still keep your team to play the same and maybe even a little bit better. And that's uh, you know I think that uh, that that's a real real accomplishment that the, you know Dan has been through. And now Rory's got to deal with injury with uh, his point guard, and we'll see how that works out for him. But that this matchup where they're both offensive teams i think it's going to be tremendous it'll be uh it'll be a great great game dave rose with us right now on the zach gelb show fox sports 920 the jersey we come to you today from the princeton orthopedic associate studios since we are broadcasting in princeton i know you got to see the princeton team to start your season this past year what a job mitch has done uh starting off the year four and six losing two big players to injuries and then ended up winning 19 straight before they lost to notre dame in the tournament uh what did you really like when you saw princeton play well his team was so balanced and they're all skilled uh you know every guy can shoot the ball from the perimeter they pass it well and and uh, you know then they were tough i mean just tough guys we you know, we had one of our better games of the season that first night at our place when we were able to beat him, uh, shot a lot of free throws, and our big guy had one of his, one of his best games of the season. But uh, we're looking forward to the matchup. We we got to come back there next year and play out there. And, uh, and uh, you know, they're, they're uh, Mitch has got it going. Anytime you can get a group of guys to go through a league schedule and not lose an undefeated league schedule. We did that as a player when I was at Houston. Uh, you know, won 16-0 in the Southwest Conference, and – and that's something that, uh, you know, not only can you hang your hat on forever as a coach, but the players, you're, the players of that group are so tight forever. And we, we still get together with our guys, um, you know, that went through that undefeated season in our league years ago. And it builds a little bit of a fire in your tummy because you're happy about what you did this year, winning the Ivy and the first ever uh, Ivy League tournament. But you get into that, just that NCAA tournament, you get a little quick appetizer taste, and then you get bounced out. I'd have to imagine those players in the summer and leading up to the season, and they're going to be motivated as ever. Absolutely. It just, it just kind of it puts your program in a place where the players are the ones who control the expectation. And new guys come in, and, hey, this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. You know, I just finished my 12th year at BYU, and we've been to eight NCAA tournaments. But this little run right here, we've been to NIT back-to-back for two years. So it's the first time in the 12 years that we've gone back-to-back years without being in the NCAA tournament. I've got a group of guys that are coming back off a of mission who were in the NCAA tournament three years ago. And, and hopefully that group will help because we've got a big challenge to get going. But uh, – it is a way you build your culture, and when your players are one set in the expectation, it's awesome. What was your favorite NCAA tournament moment just as a coach and a team that you were a part of and then maybe one that you weren't a part of? Well, you know, I think that, uh, you know, back when we had Jimmer and we're playing Gonzaga in, uh, you know, the second round to get to the Sweet 16, and we hadn't, you know, our school hadn't been there for quite a long time since Danny Ainge, and, and we were able to get in that game and, and in the second half just kind of, you know, took off and we won that. And I just remember how how satisfying it was for me to see my players so excited and so kind of thrilled to be able to move on. But then you walk out of that arena and see all those fans that have waited so long. I think that that was a, a really exciting NCAA moment for me personally as their coach. Um, as a play, I mean, as a, as a player, obviously, back in 83 when North Carolina State you know, kind of stunned us when I was playing at the University of Houston, the five slam jam, and you know, watching Jimmy V run around after that. That that kind of gets replayed every single spring, so that's uh, something that you can't really forget. But uh, that was a a great experience for me as a player, and, and then kind of as a fan, I've been to the last twenty, you know, national championship games and watched them as a coach. And um, you know, I, I think the three that the, the kid from Kansas hit a few years ago to put in the overtime uh, that that was a exciting moment but i don't know if anything will be as exciting as last year unbelievable you know, pops up and pull you know and the shot that that uh, the north carolina kid made marcus page put it to tie it my gosh was i mean you think you're you're gonna watch 100 games and you see one of those shots you know and then a minute and a half later you see the game winner i mean that was tremendous 
it shows you really what March is all about because there's heartbreak on one side, there's euphoria on the other side, and you know how hard these kids work their tails off to be in that situation. I couldn't even imagine. That's why I think UNC is going to win it all, that redemption factor. But I couldn't even imagine what Roy had to say to those kids after the game because there's really nothing to say when you have kids that are just so down like that after a game that they could have really easily won too. Yeah, it's so, so hard. And, and nothing that you say will make them, you know, feel any better. It's just time. You just have to have time to kind of let it let it settle and, and, and run its course, and then, and then you move on. But but I will tell you this, that the determination from a group of kids after a really disappointing, heartbreaking loss, uh, and if it's the right chemistry, you know, that can be magic. What was it like to coach Jimmer for that, by the way? Well, you know, it, uh, it, it was you know difficult at times. He, he was a guy who really demanded the ball to be in his hand. And early in his career, he didn't really kind of live up to the, the hype that we thought he was going to have. But uh, he, that senior year was just a joy. I mean, he came back. He put his name in the draft and got some feedback. And then he came back and said, I'm going to change this. I'm not going to be a mid to late second round pick. I'm going to be a first round pick. And I just watched that kid work. And his senior year was simple because he was a – I mean, imagine this. He's a 40, I think, 47% shooter from the field and 49 from three. I mean, that, that's, that's, a, that's a, a mind-boggling number in itself. And uh, shot a lot of them, by, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, you know, was the leading scorer in the country and, you know, won the Naismith Award and won the Wooden Award and the uh, Rupp Award. It, it, was, it was quite a, uh, quite a run with him and uh, exciting. Hopefully we can get another one here. I assume that you still have pretty good contact with Jimmer for that. Probably some long distance phone calls these days since he is playing in China and he's lighting things up. How tough of a decision is that for him if he tries to get back in the NBA, depending on what the interest is? Because I think he's averaging like 37, 38 points in China this year. It's remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. I had a 72 point game over there. And I've always said over the years, you know, people ask me what I think. And what I really think is that if you play him, he's going to score. I just believe that because he is a scoring player okay now all the other issues and the coach got to deal with it but i will tell you this he loves playing he went four years or five years last year in the, in the d league played every game all the minutes and this year in the, you know the chinese basketball association he's playing a lot of minutes and that's what i think that you know his career the focus that he really wants he wants to play and playing is where he's the happiest playing is where you know, he, he, he just in, you know, can in, enjoy the game and enjoy his life. And so wherever that is, then, uh, you know, where he's going to be able to play, uh, hopefully, hopefully he'll stay in that and make it work. I got two more for Dave Rose, the head coach of BYU Beacon Zaga earlier this season uh, back in February. Uh, the game's coming up this weekend. Who's playing in the championship game? Give me a prediction. I think it's Gonzaga and Carolina. That's, that's my pick. But uh, I could easily see the other two, but I'm just going to go with – the experience of the Zags. I mean, they've got all these fifty, you know, uh, the fifty-year guy, and then he's got he's got some guys that are juniors, but really they're four-year guys because they've been transferred. And then he's got the fifth, the, the, the graduate transfer to Matthews. And then uh, I've just watched them all year, and it's as consistent as a group as I've ever seen. I, I'm telling you, there's something really unique in the chemistry of their depth. It's unbelievable. And then also, finally, we all know all the coaches are out there on the West Coast right now, and uh, every coach in college basketball is practically out there. What are some of the events that you guys do? Because you want to be playing in this game, but when you're not playing, what are some of the events that you guys do? Well, there's the head coaches meeting, you know, which is on Friday afternoon where you get two, uh, two hours and talk about all the topics that are hot all around the country and what, what, what you need to do to – uh, you know, make sure your players are on the right track, doing the right thing. There's coaching clinics that are involved all over, uh, you know, here where, you know, there's young coaches who can go and listen to some of the older guys, more experienced, give clinics every hour. Um, then there's a lot of uh, NABC organization things with, with the National Association of Basketball Coaches. Uh, I'm involved in quite a few of the coaches versus cancer events that go on here. There's an awards night on, on Sunday where they give all the big awards out for the season. So there's a lot going on. They pack a lot of stuff into three or four days, that's for sure. And just one more thing that just popped up in my head. Since you've had a long journey at this and you've been coaching at BYU as the head coach since 2005, was an assistant there ever since 97, we know about your playing career. Just when you look back so far at your coaching career, 
Just when did you know that really that you were going to be a good coach? What was the interest that really got you involved in being a head coach on the college level? Well, you know, you, you, you hope you get your chance. I mean, I was a high school coach for, you know, three years, and I was a junior college assistant coach, and then I was a junior college head coach, and then I was a, the assistant coach here for quite a few years. You, you hope you get your chance. You never really know how it's going to work out. But, you know, that second year, well, the first year we were picked ninth. We had a 19 league. We were picked to finish ninth. We finished third, and I thought, you know, that, that this is something that, you know, these got all these guys back. And then we won the league the second year got into the NCAA tournament, and that's when you kind of go, you know what, hey, if, we're gonna, if this is what we can do, then let's do it. And we started to build that program, and we've had some pretty good success. What was the toughest part when you were an assistant high school coach and maybe doubted yourself and said, hey, I don't know if this coaching thing's going to work? Was there a moment for you like that? Yeah, a lot of them. You know, you get beat, and, you know, you got issues with parents, and you got all this outside stuff. And, you know, I, I'm lucky. I came right from um, my last game in, in, in college, and I had a head – high school job that next spring. I mean, that, I mean that spring, and then we were playing that next uh, winter. And I learned really early if it set, fit me and if it, if it felt good for me. And I, I loved it. I loved the challenge. And then I wanted to move from high school to college, and that's the whole challenge in itself. I'll tell you, if, if, you could, if you could have someone tell you, okay, 10 years from now, this is what you're going to be doing, and uh, this is the situation you're going to be in, not just go work for 10 years, it would be a whole lot easier because – we work hard, we go after it, we grind it out, and we don't really know what's going to happen to us, and that causes us so much anxiety that we don't really enjoy the time that we're, you know, making the run and getting there. And uh, I think that's probably true in a lot of things in life. But uh, uh, for me, the fact that I've, I've, I've been able to progress through this business and to, to kind of move and get to this point, I mean, I just I love the game, and it's been really good to me. Well, Coach, I'm jealous. I wish I could have been your plus one for this weekend, but we do appreciate the time. All right, guys. Hey, good luck to you.